and his benefits are rewards or blessings on the resurrection side of the cross. Okay, we're going to be kind of looking at the cross in relation to the believer. Okay, so because we're also speaking on the Song of Solomon, the scripture is so real to me that now I'm seeing the connection between the two. So let me just share this. said Song of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 1. The Song of Song which of Solomon led him, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for, there's the turning point, for thy love is better than wine or anything or anyone. Now what what is talking about that? For God's love. Well, we're talking about superior pleasures. We're talking about superior life, we're talking about benefit that the world cannot give you. When you come to the place that God's love, God's covenant, God's principle, God is better than anything or anyone that brings such a freedom. Okay, so we're, I'm starting a lot of things off with this right here, but when you get to the place that God, the things of God, are better than anything that the world has to offer, it brings you such a freedom and an anointing that destroys your body. Now let me just say this, in, in um, Matthew chapter Let's go ahead and turn to it. Matthew 13. Now I'll move quickly here because this is just a little bit of review. Uh, it will help you understand where, where we are eventually going. Matthew chapter 13 and uh, verse 22. He that received of the seed among the thorns is he that hears the word. He hears the word, but the cares of this world, the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word and becomes unfruitful. Okay, loving other things, other people having idols within your life that will bring a unfruitfulness, a barrenness upon you. Okay, so if you understand when God says, love not the world, what he's saying is, if you if you build upon that, all that's in the world shall perish, uh, but the word of God shall abide forever. So what he's saying is, don't build upon sin and sin, because sooner or later, it's going under. It's going down, it's just a matter of time. So when you so when he said, love not the world, the, the, the things are in the world, for all that is in the world shall perish. Okay, so when you understand there's a spirit of the world, there's a spirit behind all that. Okay, so that's why he's saying, love not the world, because he wants you to win and not lose. Satan's goal is to make the world look very good, the things of the world, and try to make it, what it, what it really is, it's what we call fool's goal. Okay, it glitters, it's got this neon sign, but what it is, it's a lie. Okay, so he said, the, kid, the person heard the word. He heard it. Oh, my God, what a word. Oh, my God, what a... But the, the, but the cares of this world, the busyness, the distraction, and the deceitfulness of riches began going into money, and so they could buy things for themselves, choke the word. The word choke to mean drown, crowd out, strangle, and compete against. And then it becomes the person becomes unfruitful. But, verse 23, verse 23, but... He that received the seed in the good ground as he that hears the word and, and understands it and bears fruit. What's God's will for you? But that you be fruitful. Yeah. Okay, that bears fruit and it will bring forth some a hundredfold. This is what I wanted to say. This is why I came to the scripture. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now look right here at this man. Basically, what happens is you set the limit how far you want to go with God. You can go as far as you want. You want 5%? Of your inheritance, God will let you settle for it. If you want 30%, you want 60%. If you want 100%, see, that's what the remnant is. The remnant is 100% people. Yeah. See, when you when you want to go all the way with God, you will get on your on the nerves of people who have no intention about going on with God. You expose them to be so much light within you, it will expose darkness within you. Okay, so when you come to the Lord, you say, I want everything that you have for me, God. I want to go all the way with you. I want to be a hundredfold. I want a hundredfold what you have for me. Not 60, not 30, not 5, not 10. I want everything that you have for me. You will get on people's nerves. They begin to separate themselves from you. Luke 6, 22 said, Blessed are you when they shall separate themselves from you. Wow. See, you, we, 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 oh, I feel rejected. No. There's a people, you're so, your light is so shining, you're so committed to God, they're committed to the world, you're committed to God. Amen. And let me, let me put it this way, okay? If you are committed to light and the other people are committed to darkness, how much fellowship are you going to have? Yeah. How much fellowship does light have with darkness? Yeah. And the answer is, yeah. that's why you can't get along with some people, that's why they're conflict. <laughs> you're in two different worlds, you're in two different realms, one some in the world and some in the kingdom of God, some in light, some in darkness. <laughs> 
Okay, but remember that his love, God, your love is better than why? For your love is, is better, better than, than anything or anyone yes. that the world can bring me. Yes, more Lord than Jesus. any person, any any amount of money, anything that we can buy. Yes, your yes, love is yes. better. Your and love see, when, is better. When you, when you get right with God, all these things, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things. Okay, so when you put God first, then all these other things will come. But I tell people, get right with God, stay right with God for a long period of time, and one day you're going to pop out in the light, you're going to pop out with victory, and Lord be the increase, and promotion, all kind of these things well, will come from you. And it's not how we start this journey, it's where we end up. Many people start this journey, but they hear a voice, the voice of the flesh. The voice of the world, and they think that the devil tricks them to make decision that will cause the the they will think that they're winning, but in reality they're losing because they're building upon sinking sand. Okay, uh, again by by review, and I'll say this quickly: Matthew sixteen. <coughs> I want to try to get this in. I don't, I don't want to preach too long with this because I've already shared it, but this is important. I want you to see that. Uh, Matthew 16, verse 24, And Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Okay, that's basically what the cross is to the believer. There's a denial, abstaining from self, from the self line. Then when you live for God, you live for other people. What he's saying is, you will be more fulfilled, you'll be happier, yeah. you enter into your inheritance, but if you put yourself first, and the world first, and things first, and people first, you're building upon sinking sands. Yes. Yes. Because God loves you, and He wants you to win. Yes. So when He said, when He said, deny yourself, when he, when he, and He said, love not the world, not say, I, I want you to sit in the corner and be bored till the day you kick the bucket. No. There is a way that when the things of God is better Amen. than anything or anyone. Yes, for sure. Um, believe me, I, in my heathen days, yeah. I knew how to party. And uh, I'd rather be in here tonight than, than I'm telling you, I knew how to party. Oh, yeah. there were, when I became a Christian, there were people crying, said, Bill, Bill, don't become a Christian because nobody can party like you. I'm serious. <laughs> if any man will come into me, let him deny himself and take him his cross. There's the cross. Take up your cross and follow me. Now, so when he says, deny yourself, deny self, not the self line, take up your cross and follow me. Now, here, here's an aspect that I've ne I never, I, I, I never saw until today. Take up your cross and follow me. Didn't Jesus carry the cross? Until he could no longer carry the Simon carry to help him carry the cross, and where did he go to? Golgotha. Okay, so he went. So we need. He he picked up his cross and went to the place that he would die. Now there's the death, there's a burial, but after that there's a resurrection. So what we're talking about tonight is the cross in relation to the believer. We're talking about we're talking about the cross and the resurrection on the resurrection side. We're talking about. Amen. We're not just going to die, 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 die. We're going to know we're going to be raised. Yes, the yes, same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall dwell in you and shall quicken and make a life no more than mine. Be careful, be careful hanging around the real Jesus. You become so alive, you no longer need alcohol, you no longer need drugs or immorality, you never need pornography. You'll be so happy, so fulfilled, you'll be so alive, you will abstain from death. Amen. Amen. As we said, if any man will come back to me, see a lot of people, a lot of people are not coming after him to come to church and they tolerate a church service. They're real happy. They're loud out there, but quiet in here. Quiet in church house in here because the anointing paralyzes them. Okay, that if any man will come back to me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever shall save his life shall lose it. A lot of people say, I'm not going to give God my life. Well, what happened to God said, they lose their life, man. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That's what that's what God told this little angel here tonight. When she was dancing like that, the things were breaking off of her. Amen. Coming out of the yes. dirt you have a life. She Amen. began to read identity. God began to give her identity. Praise and she had the anointing of leadership. Amen. She's somebody for God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And I've got to keep this real quick. Because it's just review. What, what is a man from that again the whole world loses his soul? What shall a man show? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Turn to Colossians chapter 3 now. I'll try to say this quickly. Um, and then we get into the, the part that 
uh, I feel like the Lord wanted me to share today. And remember, we're talking about the cross in relation to the believer. We're talking about the cross of the resurrection side. We're talking about going to the cross, and then we're talking about the, the benefits, the rewards, the blessing, the favor of, of to be to the cross, then, then the resurrection side, okay? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If, keep, keep point with that, if, if you then are risen with Christ, having been to the cross. Amen. See, have we, this, is what we, this is what we need to communicate to people. Have you just been to church or did you get to God? Have you just been to church or did you get in the presence of God? Have you been going to church all these years but you've never been to the cross? You never died? No wonder there's no resurrection because you had the same person that you were for before is still existing. This is what I tell people when I go back home. I tell people that the Bill Sengivitz, if they do, you can't find him. He's dead. He's been buried. You can't find him. He's no longer. The Bill Sengivitz, if they do, the drinking, the drug, and the fornicating, the party, the lying, the cheating, he does no longer exist. He's dead. He doesn't exist. He went to the cross and he was, that old man was buried. He no longer exists. And I've been, but see, I'm not just there, buried. I've been raised. I've been, come on. If you've been to the cross, you've been raised a new life of Christ. Hey, now, what, what God wants me to teach people is that the benefits, the rewards, the blessing, the favor of this side of the cross, the resurrection side, is better than anything that's on the other side. You get your life, you be risen. And so he said, i got to keep it. But if, if then we have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. In other words, don't just sit, tolerate the church service. Don't just have a Bible upon your shelf at home. Seek God. If you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. Set your affection upon things above, not upon the things of the earth. Okay, now, I'm not going to preach it because I've already shared this, but I, I want to just make a few points, okay? Verse, verse 5, Mortify, therefore, the members that upon your uh, earth fornication, that's all sex out of wedlock, uncleanness, and inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, let me read that scripture out of the Amplified Bible. Here's what it says, So kill, deaden, deprive of power, the evil desire lurking in your members of your body those animal impulses and all that is earthly within you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetite, unholy desire, all greed and covetousness, for that is idolatry, the deifying of self. Yes. See, in other words, if, if the flesh wants it, it says, I'm going to, I'll do it. If I want to do it, nobody's going to tell me what to do. So when it says, that is I. All greed and covetous, that is idolatry, but deifying himself in another created thing instead of God. Okay, so let me, I'm just going to put a few words in here. Verse 8 said, put off, put off these things, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy Thank communication. God. Stop cursing, stop Thank lying. God. Awesome. Now look right here, Mr. Man, okay? Now, <laughs> what the Spirit of God wants us to understand and comprehend, you don't just come to the altar pray the sinner's prayer be, and become right. perfect. Right. There's going to be, your, there'll be uh, demons that'll talk to you and your flesh will talk to you. Yeah. There'll be soul ties that'll talk to you. There'll be all kinds of things. What God wants you to understand, what all of us to understand is that we may get, we get saved, we may be forgiven, but there's sin. We need, we need some cleansing. We need, you and I need to make some choices. We need to make some choices. Put off, Amen. put on. Yes. Put off, put on. Now here, now, new understanding for me, okay? Maybe you already understood, uh, knew this and never said that. I did, I'm getting more revelation. See, because around here, you know, we got Reverend come out of here and, and uh, he said two words quite often. It's a drop of my What's he saying? So he, we call him Reverend come out. He says, oh, come on, come on. Huh? And uh, we say that word a few times. Amen? Amen. But, but I'm saying there are some things that are not necessarily delivered. There are some things I need to say no to. Amen. That's our Amen. thought they come to me that originates in my flesh. And there's the aspect of the cross that I say no. I put off and I put on. I put up the old and I put on the new. He that says Christ is a new creature. Old things pass away. I'm in the become new. See, there are people that go to tin church. They're still smoking what they smoked before they supposedly came a Christian. They're still drinking what they drank before. They're still having sex out of wedlock. And they're walking around talking, I'm a Christian. No, they're deceived. 
because they're still the old person. Yeah. Because he that's in Christ is a new creature. Old things pass away. How many things become new? All things become new. And that is a process. There's something that you and I got to say no to. There, there may be thought, there may be desire, there may be things that come to you. That you got, we got to understand. We got a mind, we got a will, we got emotions. Sometimes I got to make a right choice. It's not a demon. Come on, it's not a demon. Sometimes I'm the problem. And I, I will make this real clear. I believe in deliverance as much as anyone probably in this city. We say two words around here a lot, don't we, Reverend Command? We say come out a whole lot, but sometimes, see, it's our flesh. Sometimes the devil's not the problem. Let me put that let me put this way. Who was the real problem in the Garden of Eden? Was God's lack of power? Was it the devil? Or was it Adam and Eve making an unwise, foolish choice? Sometimes the devil not the problem. Sometimes I can be the problem. Okay, so, uh, so in verse 8, you know, put off, put off anger, put off rant, put off malice, put off blasphemy, stop yelling, screaming, cursing, uh, stop lying, uh, saying that you have, hopefully you put off the old man and put on the new man. See, here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to just come to church and never put on the old and never put on the new. There's, there's something there that we need to do. Okay, so verse 12, put on therefore, elect of God, put on, put on holy, put on elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, put on kindness, come on, stop telling people off at that. Stop telling people how you feel. Uh, well, I'm going to give a piece of my mind. <laughs> the Bible says a fool will say everything upon his mind. Okay? So it's time we get the whole word time. Put on there for the elect of God, holy beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, love, sir, forbearing one another. That means sometimes sometimes we just gotta put up with one another. Yeah. Yeah. We all got certain things that can get on people's nerves, so we gotta put up with one another. We gotta forgive one another. Many men that quarrel, even in Christ, will forgive you. In verse fourteen, and above all, they put on love. We just abound the perfection. All right, now I wanna I wanna go to First Corinthians chapter one. This will be the beginning of my message for tonight. The cross in relation to the believer. And what we're talking about, the benefits, the rewards, the blessings, the favor of the resurrection side of the cross. Okay, so it's, it's this simple. We keep, this is so real to me. It, it's so simple that many times we miss it. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, it says, I, I set before you death and life. Yes. And the devil tries to make death look better than life. Because it'll, form, it'll come in the form of a very attractive body. Come on, it'll, it'll, a whole lot of money or, or some fancy thing. It'll come. It'll be attracted to the mind. See, and then we're gonna put that off and put on the new. Put off the old. Put on the new. Okay, now Paul the apostle talks a lot about the cross. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time because we this church, the Spirit of God wants the church to understand different aspects of the cross. Okay, so in First Corinthians chapter one verse seventeen. For Christ did not send me to baptize people, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ. I'm not called to preach with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now let me say a couple things here. Is that Kenneth Hagin Sr. said this, uh, I read in one of his books, he said, we can educate our minds to the expense of our spirit man. So we can there are people that go to school and they learn all kind of theology. And they learn they learn all kind of Hebrew. They learn all kind of Greek, and they they have perfect grammar. And they're so knowledgeable, but but many times they go through all this book learning, but they're basically not even saved. They don't even have a relationship yeah. with God. And so when they get up, what they're doing, they're regurgitating, they're parroting what they've been taught, and they're not even alive in God. So what Paul's saying, I don't come with wisdom of word. I'm not trying to impress you with what I know, with my theology. I'm not trying to tell you about the Hebrew. I'm not trying to tell you about the Greek. Because, see, we can begin to worship knowledge, yeah. yes. but not even know God. Yes. So what he's saying is, lest the cross of Jesus Christ, here's my message. Remember the guy in the Bible? Once I was blind, but now I see. Yes. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive. 
See, what is he saying? I've been to the cross. Yeah. It wasn't, I didn't get my head educated. Yeah. Yes, <coughs> Paul was a very educated man. He was a very yeah, educated was man. Educated. He was a man of influence. He was a man with, with money. Yeah. And, uh, and But what he's saying is, I want, here's what he's saying, and this is what we really need to understand. This is not about educating our heads. Mm. Have we been to the cross? Yes. Show me, see, here, here's what the Bible said. He said the same thing in kind of another way. He that for, has been forgiven much loves much. Yes. So people that you see really love our God, they were Oh, no oh yeah, yeah. That's right. That's saved by grace and they understand. Once I was blind, but now I see. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. And they're so grateful. Where they didn't just come to church. They have they have seen Jesus and they accepted him. They invited him to his heart. And so they have been to the cross. The person that they were before is dead. No longer get them to the cross. And they buried their old man, but they didn't just stay there. They have been raised to a new life in Christ. What I'm telling you. If you die to who you are and you're born again, you're buried the old man, you don't just stop right there. You get raised, the same spirit to raise God to the dead shall dwell in you and shrink it, shall shrink it and make alive your mortal body. Why are so many people dancing like this? Because they're so alive they can't sit down. They've got to respond. They've got to express the love that they got from God. Okay, so Paul said. He didn't say me to bedtime. Just he didn't put send me to put people just under water, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of another thing. Now, what I want you to understand: there, there, are, there are churches, there are denominations, there are organizations, there are movements, and their goal is to get people to join the church. And someone could be in that church and be there for fifty years and never be to the cross. And they think they're winning, but around the they're losing. Yeah. So Paul's saying, I have been called to preach the cross. we got to go to the cross. we got to die to who we are. And we can be raised in new life of Christ. So he says, verse 18, The preaching of the cross is to them that are perishing foolishness. It is. Now, there are going to be people going to tell you, what's, what's wrong with you? You get crazy anyway. Right? Where are you going to... See, they're, they're going to the gambling casino five or six, seven times out of the week. They're getting, they're smoking cigarettes every day. They're drinking liquor almost every day. Yeah. They're getting high by it every day. They're lying just about every day. Uh, and and they mock you. How come you're going to church so often? Yes. Mm. See, because the preaching of the cross to them is fully, to them that perish, what they're telling you, I'm not saying. Yes, yeah. Right. Because they're mocking, they're committed to the world, they're committed to themselves, they're committed to pleasure, mm. and they mock you for being committed to God. Yeah. But they not the the preaching of the cross to, to them that perish. Yes. Mm. In other words, they're not saved. And the preaching of the so we go be people tell you, oh, you don't you don't need to do all that. You don't. You just you know I go to church every now and then. Is it? Um, you know, back in my heathen days, we would go to the laundromat. I would go to the laundromat. I go to the laundromat once a week, and I got that off on my back. That's how church is to some people. I got God on my back for another week. Yeah. They've never been to the cross. The preaching of the cross of the, then the parish is foolishness. Yeah. They don't understand it. They no, can't they comprehend don't. it because the natural mind can't comprehend things of the spirit. Yes, so we say the preaching of the cross. You got to die, brother. Yes, Lord. You got to die. You've not been born again. You come to church, but you've not been born again. You haven't died. You're still smoking what you used to smoke. You're still drinking what you used to drink. In fact, you're smoking about everything comes along. You're still taking your clothes off. You've not been to the cross. You've been to the church, but you've not, you've not died to who you are. So Paul said, the preaching of the cross is the that that perish foolishness, but, but to us who are saved, it is the power. It is the power. Oh, okay, yes. Yes. It is the power. It's yes. the power of God. Yes. See the same spirit. See oh. the same spirit that raised Christ of the dead shall dwell on you and quicken and make alive your body. Yes. Why can't some of us not? Why can't we shut up? Because yes. we're so alive. Amen. We got to communicate. We got to tell somebody. I'm going to move a little fast because I want to try to get somewhere else. Verse 19, for it is written, I, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the proud. 
Where is the wife? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Yes. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom did not know God. It pleased God. So it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching, oh, the preaching of the cross, yes. to save them that believe. Yes. For the Jews require a sign, the Greeks and non-covenant people seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Yes. Instead, we, we preach Christ what? Crucified. We preach Christ what? Yes. And he's a picture of the labor case. So he, he comes, he goes to the he, he was in heaven, he comes back, he lives as a man, he went to the cross, he died, he was buried, but three days later, but three days later, three days later he rose. Okay, okay so what are, what's our message? We preach Christ and him crucified. Thank you, Lord. Now, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrite people, religious people that are that are deceived by religion. They'll tell you you don't need to you don't need to be all that to be you don't need to be going to church all night you don't got to be reading your Bible you need to be doing praying you don't need to be doing all the saints and they'll be mocking the Holy Spirit they'll be mocking deliverance they'll be mocking healing they'll be mocking uh, prophecy they'll be mocking all the things because the natural mind can't comprehend things of the Spirit okay but these are by the these are by the power of God verse twenty five because the foolishness of God is wiser than men the weakness of God is stronger than men for you see your calling brethren. For you see your calling, brother, that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God had chosen, but God had chosen, the word chosen there means you have been picked out, you have been selected by choice with the idea of kindness and favor and love. That's what the word means. You have been chosen, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the way. See, here's what he's saying. Some people maybe the worst thing they ever did in their life was when they was a kid, they went to a dime store and they, and they stole a five cent pea shooter. That's the worst thing they ever did. Now, now they, they feel like Bobby or Daddy might have passed her. They say, well, okay, uh, you need to be in the ministry. So they go, they go to Bible school and they educate their head. And they got all this knowledge, but they really don't know God for themselves. They never had to contend or victory. Show me somebody who's been to hell and back. <laughs> yes. Drinking, drunk, and fornicating, lying to all kinds of bondage, all kinds of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, <laughs> see, the bigger the fool you were, Woo, we the bigger the fool you were, the more you qualified. But God had that noble. chosen, not many mighty, not many noble are called, yeah. I'm called the yeah. foolish yeah. things of this world to confound the white, that men would not trust in the yeah. wisdom of men, yeah. and that men would not trust in education. Yes. Yeah. See, because people can trust in their education and we and people come to church and they get their brains tickled. Their intellect is tickled. It's all about intellectual. We're going to intellectual. We're going to ascend intellectually. We're going to think about God for a little bit. Then we'll go back to the world and we'll roll around week long. But this, show me somebody. Show me somebody like Paul the Apostle. There's Saul who became Paul the Apostle. Show me somebody who really been in some trouble. Come on, say to God. Not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise are called. I call the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that which are mighty, the base things of the world, the things that are despised, yet God had chosen, that no flesh but glory in his presence. Verse 30, very powerful. This, you want to mark this. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, whom of God whom of God has made unto us wisdom, wisdom righteousness, yeah. sanctification, and redemption. Come on, do you see the blessing? Amen. See, we're Amen. talking about the resurrection Amen. side of the cross. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about you're chosen, yes. okay, you've been made, made to us wisdom, righteousness, Glory. sanctification, redemption, that according to his written, he that glorieth, let him glory in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Not in our education. No. Now, let me tell you something that we in ministry, we can miss it. And, and how, many, how many preachers have we known became world famous and yeah. ended up following? Yeah. See, here, let me tell you what he's saying right here. You could start, you could be a sinner, genuinely get saved, genuinely go to the cross, die, Bury the old man, be resurrected to new life in Christ, 
And here's what he's saying. As time goes on, and God anoints you, then some people can begin to trust in, I am anointed. Mm. I have this gift. Mm. I have giftings. Yeah. I've got this yeah. large ministry. <laughs> and Paul is saying, if I'm going to glory, I'm going to glory in the cross. Yes. It's all about the cross. Yeah. See, sometimes we forget the cross. Mm -hmm. And we get focused. Oh, I've got, I got a gift here. Mm -hmm. I've got a large ministry. I'm well known. I'm famous. People know me. People recognize me. Mm -hmm. And we get off base. So when he says, let him the glory, let him glory in God. In God. See, yeah. what a, what a, once I was blind, but now I see. And we'll say more about that a little. Yeah. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Okay. Uh, let me just say this. That my speech and my preaching, verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4, my, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith would not extend to the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But what he's saying is, we're not going to trust in education. Now, let, let me make sure that I'm communicating well. We're not talking about don't get educated in the natural. We're talking about you want education in the natural. You want you want to graduate from high school. You want college. You want to be educated. But in the things of God, education doesn't necessarily get you there. It's about the power of God. We have to, our heads can be educated to the expense of our spirit. So there's certain things, to put the, to say the same thing another way, there's certain things that will work in the business arena that will not work in the kingdom of God. There's certain things that will work in the natural education, but they will not work in the body of Christ. Because it's spiritual mind. Okay, the, the natural mind cannot comprehend things. So let me say what he says. It, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the great things that God has in store for you. But now God has revealed them to you by His Spirit. Okay, so what he says, he goes on, he says, the natural mind cannot comprehend things of the Spirit. Okay, so that, that's all Satan really needs to do to defeat us, to keep us from our inheritance, our purpose, and our fullness of our inheritance. Remember the 30-fold, the 60-fold, the 100-fold? If you want the 100-fold, the Satan to defeat you, to get to the 100-fold, is just to get you naturally mind enough that you can't comprehend things of the Spirit. Okay, now let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 2. And I shared this one, uh, before, so I'm not going to stay here long because we're going to another place. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I, I am crucified with Christ. I've been to the cross. I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh or in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. See, His love is better. For His love, for His love is better. And when you get to the place, you talk about freedom so that you understand who loved me and gave Himself for me. Okay, now turn to the right, just a page or two. Galatians chapter 5. <coughs> now this is where I'm going I'm to make this plain to you, okay? The, the Spirit of God wants us to understand the, the, the benefits of the resurrection side of the cross. So we're going to see a contrast between the flesh and the spirit, okay? So we're going to uh, look at this here just a little bit. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. For brethren, you have been called to liberty. That word liberty means freedom. It means to be exempt from bondage. You have been called to liberty, to freedom. Only do not use that liberty as an occasion for the flesh, but by love serve one another. Let me just say this, that the more anointed, the more anointed that you become, the more influence you have with people, and that will, that will be attracting people to you, and you've got to be careful, don't use that as an advantage for the flesh. That's what he, he's just making a plain that someone could be someone could be a minister up front, and uh, uh, you think you're supposed to marry him, you fall in love, you know. Uh, I remember back in my single day when I first got saved, or, you know, be girls up her lead song service and I just picture oh I'm going to marry a song leader and, and just you know the, there's, there's certain things that you've got to you've got to you can't take advantage of people so he said by love serve one another for all the laws fulfill in one word even in this that thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another the word devour me consumed by eating if you bite and devour one another and take heed that you not be consumed of one another now Watch what he says here. This is it. 
if, if you have trouble with your flesh, here's, a, here's part of the answer. One of a big part of the answer. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. In other words, see, don't walk in the energy of the flesh. Don't walk in the natural. Learn how to walk in the Spirit. Because yeah. if you walk in the Spirit, that's the antidote for walking in the flesh. Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you learn no longer the flesh, we're going to crucify the flesh. And we're going, to be, we're going to enter into resurrection. So we're no longer going to walk in the flesh. We're going to walk in the Spirit. Because yes. if we walk in the Spirit, you'll never fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will be free. Yes. So here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to just come to church and tolerate a church service. You've got to come in contact with God for yourself. Amen. You've got to meet God in a very powerful way. We must be born again. Then when we're born again, we've got to crucify the old man. That's what Paul said. I'm crucified to Christ. Then when I live, get the life. And now Christ is living to me. And the life I'm now living is Christ. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so there's the... There's the, the antidote for walking in the flesh is walking yeah. in the Spirit. Lord. Okay, walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh wars, the flesh wars against the Spirit. How many have ever felt that? Oh, yeah. You felt that? Yeah. The flesh War. wars or lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another to try to hinder you so that you cannot do the thing that you would. Yeah. See, the flesh that. wants to war against you the flesh wants to embattle you. The flesh wants to come against you yeah. so that you can't do things in the Spirit. But if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank so there's Lord. a putting the debt to the things of the flesh. And we're going to see that in a little bit, okay? You're going to see this is a very powerful way. That's why I shared Colossians chapter 3. If you're risen, if you are risen with Christ, then set your affection upon the things above. So then you don't just get saved, that you begin to seek the things of God. So you begin to pursue everything that God said back there, and you're going to see more of it here. And I've got a list I'm going to go through here in a little bit. Okay? For the flesh, verse 17, the flesh will lust or war against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. There, there will be a war that goes on, and you and I have a will. we got to choose what side we're going to be in. The flesh will be trying to pull you the wrong way, and the Spirit of God will try to pull you the right way. And it comes down to our will. Uh, I will say this again. Some things will not be deliverance. You and I got to make Amen. choices. Yeah. When it's said before your death in life, you got to choose life. Yeah. It's not a demon of death. It's either yeah. there's death or life. You got to choose life. Yes, Lord. So, awesome. I, I don't want to see them all the time. I'm going there a little bit. These things are contrary one to another. They're trying to hinder you so that you cannot do the thing that you would. But, but if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So now awesome. the works, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now here's the works of the flesh. The, that, the flesh talks about the body is opposed to the soul or the spirit. It means the call of the human nature. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read these out of the New American Standard. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities or hate, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, dispute, dissension, factions, envy, jealousy, drunkenness, and carousing. Okay, so he says, those things which I tell you before and I have told you in the time plan, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. So when people are smoking what they used to smoke before they supposedly became a Christian, and they're drinking what they used to drink before they supposedly became a Christian, and they're still having sex out of wedlock, then they've not been to the cross. Because he says that right here, that them that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so it comes down to, do we want death? Do we want life? Amen. Do we want the devil? Do we want Jesus? Do we want hell? Do we want heaven? Amen. I'll say more about that in a little bit. Yes. Okay, yes. then that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the yes. Spirit. Yes. Now, they're going to see the contrast here, okay? Yes. There's a contrast here. Yes. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such things, there, are, there is no law. Now here's the key. Here's why I really want to come here. I want to give you the contract. And we'll say more about that just a little bit. Verse 24. Very powerful. They that belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh. Amen. 
Praise God. They have won. They did it. Amen. They did it by saying no. They did it by saying yes to life and no to death. They did it by saying yes to God, no to the devil. They did it by saying yes to righteousness and no to unrighteousness. They did it. Not everything is a demon. You and I got to make choices. You and I got to crucify the flesh. We got to make the death. Everything. Hallelujah. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and all of its love. Proverbs says this in the Living Bible. Guard your affections. For they influence everything else that they do. God's word is so real. Word is true. Tells us everything in here. Thank you, Jesus. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affection and lust. That means evil desires. If we walk. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, now, I want to, I want to, and maybe uh, I didn't have time to make a copy of this. I want to, I want to enlarge upon this right here. God just wants us to, to understand something, okay? God wants us to understand there are certain things that uh, I'm learning more and more and more about the cross. And I'm, I, this is really helping me. Everything is not a demon. Everything is not deliverance. Yeah. You and I got to make right choices. Amen. Okay, because, uh, let, let me put it this way. With all the alcohol I drank before I got saved, with all the drugs that I did, with all the immorality that I wallowed in, when I became a Christian in 1975, since 1975, no liquor, no illicit drugs, no sex out of wedlock has happened in this body. Now, I had demons in me. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 I accidentally come into Presbyterian Church here. I thought it was, I thought it was in bed. I had demons in me. I had sex demons in me. Oh, they would talk to me. Oh, yeah. oh I heard a voice. Here's what I refused to say just a little bit ago. And now I'll say it. I had sex devils in me. After I prayed the sinner's prayer. And one day the Spirit of God said, because I was working for Teen Challenge, we'd go on the streets free way to sing. Mm. You ever had God deal with your stuff? Uh-huh. Yes. And you know, there was yeah. this guy by the name of Bob Stewart. Bob Stewart and I used to go on the street all the time. And uh, so one day, <laughs> God, uh, God dealt with me. Mm. So God says, uh, there's a group of people over there. How come when there's a group of people out there, how come you always feel led to go witness to the prettiest girl? Come on, come on, come on, sir. Oh, I, I feel, I feel led. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not flesh. Now you got them crucified. Now here's what I'm telling you: when I got saved. Yeah. I had all my demons of rejection. I had all my demons of, of all my sex devils, all the alcohol devils, all the drug devils, all the carousing devils. I had devils. But I drank no liquor. I had no illicit drugs. I didn't have sex out of wedlock because I made a choice. I crucified the flesh. When I, when I came to the altar, I didn't just come to church. I came to God and I came to the cross and I died to who I was. And even though my demons were talking to me real loud, real clear, not only giving me thoughts, but giving me desires, I didn't have to do it even though I had the demon. I said no to the demon and yes to God. Because I, when I came to church, I decided I'm going to die to that. I saw that God said before we did to life and I choose life. Amen. So I said no to everything that would bring me back into body and God just brought me out of it. Come on, somebody give God some praise. The demons had no power over me unless I gave it to them. Come on, I had my sex devil. Now, I'm sure none of you had any, but you might meet someone out there that you can, you can, you can witness to them. <laughs> So if 
we say that we're a Christian and we're still smoking what we smoked before and we're still drinking what we used to drink and we're still having sex out of the wedlock and we tell people we're safe, what are we safe from? Amen. Not safe from alcohol, not safe from smoking, not safe from party, not safe, not safe from sex out of wedlock. Come on, saints of God. I tell you there's a difference between being religious and coming to the church. Something else has been in the church. They have never been to the cross. They have not died. When you die, you got authority Amen. to receive it and receive him. He gave you the power to become Amen. a super God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you order a sandwich and you ask for mayo, and someone accidentally put Miracle Whip up on it, don't become a serial killer because yeah. something went wrong with in your life. Oh, Stop looking no. for an excuse to push out and Amen. sin. We got Amen. to give up. We got to come Amen. to the cross. We got to die. We got to crucify the flesh. Yeah. Then you belong to Christ. Have crucified the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I come to the cross. And I allow, allow self to be nailed to the cross. Once I'm on there, I can't go. You know, I think this was a bad idea. I want to come down. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go through. Everything that we're trying to say here, I'm, I'm going to illustrate this for you. I'm going to try to go back into the scriptures. God wants us to understand. Don't blame everything upon the devil. Mm. That's right. Very don't true. don't. Uh, That's not what that was for. We tell them to get lost. Don't think that deliverance is a cure all. That's right. Um, That's right. Pastor Jan and I many years ago, many years ago, we had a we had a service. That's for me. And it was on a Sunday. And we had uh, we had relatives in town, we had vis uh, visitors, and at the end of the service, I was tired. And a man pulls up, and he begs me because he's a sex addict. Mm. He pleads with me. He pleads with me. He pleads with me. Cast <laughs> these demons out of me. I'm done with them. I go. I, I, you didn't even come to church. Yeah. Please with me, he begs me, please with me. We had guests in the house. It was about 90 some degrees. So where we lived at that time, about two blocks away, there was a field, open field, and a forest. That's where I went to pray. So I grabbed two chairs, and I take this man out of this field by myself, cast out over 100 sex devils out of him. Wow. We already had church. I preached my heart out. We had song service. Out in the heat, I cast out over 100 sex devils out of him. And I come back and I'm tired. You know what the man did? The man got in his vehicle and drove straight to a go-go club. Oh, Everything wow. was cast out. Comes right back in. Um, see, people still got a choice. See, he never made to the cross. He could have said no. Now, I said no. That's right. See, you have the power to say no. That's true. Yeah. You don't have to say it because you got a sex devil. Come on, say to God. That's true. You don't have to say it because you got any kind of demon. Amen. You got power. Yes. Say no. Yes. And that's what he said. He, them that belong to Jesus Christ, have crucified the flesh. Mm. If we haven't been to the cross, that we do not yet belong to Jesus. We just come to church, but we, we people avoid the cross. Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus was contending in Gethsemane, and he's contending in his prayer life, that he's great. He's sweating blood. Mm -hmm. Because of contending, the disciples fled from the cross. The disciples fled from Gethsemane because they were not yet yeah. willing to die. Yes. Wish I'd only fled from my Gethsemane once. Amen. We can talk about that. You fled from your Gethsemane when I would do such a thing, and here I've, I've run 
5,800 times from my Gethsemane. Amen. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that have perished. Yes. Yes. What's wrong with you? You don't have to be that kid. You're crazy. You must be going to some kind of cult. What's wrong with you? You're so dedicated. You're so consecrated. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not in church as often as you're at the crack house. <laughs> I'm not in church as often as you smoke cigarettes. I'm not yeah. in church as often as, as you go to the liquor store. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we're talking about the works of the flesh. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to contrast something for you. Now, Sunday morning, I preached a message. And we played the song, The God Will Win Your Heart. And, and the little gal, that little skinny gal, with a great big voice, You have won my heart. You have won my heart. Why don't you key that up? You have won my heart. I, I want to bring something before you, and we can make copies of this afterwards. Just let let the Spirit of God minister to you. So when God says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting in verse 15, I set before you death and life. Choose life that you and your seed may live and may multiply. What he's saying is, I want you to win. But it needs to be your choice. Yes. God's not going to hold a gun to your head and make someone love him. Amen. It's not about attending church wall legalism. It's that I keep coming back to Song of Solomon verse, oh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. His love. is better than wine. His love is yes. better than wine. And his desire is for he's you. Me. Yes. His desire is for he's you. For me. So what he's saying is, listen, I'll set before you death and life I'll give you the choice. I'm not going to make you. If you make the wrong choice, I'll draw you. Yes. I'll convict you. If I have to, I'll make your nest uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Things will begin to go wrong. What I'm after is That's I want you good. to understand that God's love is better than anything any man, woman, Amen. what the world can give you. Hallelujah. But it has to be our choice. He doesn't make you. He's not going to hold a gun to anybody. Like, you better, you better, you better love. Who's going to fall in love with someone holding a gun to your head? Amen. See the nonsense of it? Yeah. Okay, so I want to just, I want to give you the contrast and then I'm going to try to get back in the scriptures. Every time I'm going to get back in the scriptures because I, I, I feel like there's something good. Just watch the contrast now. The works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Now, watch the contrast and, will, and then count. Okay, now, because them that belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. Okay, so let's just look at them like hell or heaven. If we had two people, if we had the devil standing over here and Jesus over here, we could say in church, I love you, Jesus, but leave with the devil. Oh, yes. That's true. Come on. Yeah, it's true. It's not what we say with our mouth, it's what we say with our life. Yes, you yes. can't scheme on God. Amen. Thank God. I tried. Yeah. So it went to you. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Which do we want? Do we want to be full of demons? Or do we want to be full of the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. See what he's saying. He, here's here, we choose. Now remember, that's why I share thirty fold, sixty fold, hundred fold. You choose how much you want. How much Holy Spirit anointing do we want? Oh. Uh, sometimes we do need to hang around. And Esau gave up his centers for a bowl of soup. So. Sometimes rather than going in and get a bowl of soup, we need to come over here and call a few things Yes. Thank God. And that will give you room to get yes. food. I have uh, more space to hold spirit. Okay, so there be two things. The world, the kingdom of God. All God does is watch where someone goes. He wants to know where is your heart. Have you ever, have you ever heard someone say, I love God? Oh, yeah. Here's James 4.4. 4. He that is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Of God. 
there will be people that tell you, oh, I love God. Oh, but they are so in love with the world. And they are technically an enemy yeah. of God who Amen. comes to church and critiques and fault finds everybody else. Amen, that's right. Because if they open up the heart, God would deal with their stuff. Yes. And they would rather remain an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, don't we, wouldn't we rather be loved? Mm -hmm. So here's what he says. Yes. You want to be hated? No. Or do you want love? Love. Amen. God is love. love. Depression? You want to be depressed? No. Or do you want the joy of the Lord? Joy of the Lord. See the works of the flesh or the fruits of the spirit. Yes. Do you want immorality no. or morality? Morality. Now, when you're in the immorality, let, let's just be real clear. There's many people, sex is their God. And they will battle real low very often. When someone's under that spirit of deception, and they look at you at church, the natural mind can comprehend things of the spirit that the presence of God is better than the arms of a lover. Yes. Amen. That's right. That's why by, in the beginning you got to, you got to just start by faith. Yes. Amen. That morality is better than immorality when you become so alive in God. Mm -hmm. Believe me. Yep. Don't think I'm bragging about that. I'm telling you, I, I knew how to I knew how to get drunk. I knew how to get high. Amen. Yeah. Real high. And when I got saved, I found something better than any drug I ever been to. I'm telling you. Jesus. Would you, would you rather be through all kind of divorces? Or would you rather have a godly marriage? Or do you want rebellious, unteachable, angry children? Or you want godly children that will love Amen. God love you? See, these are the choices. Do we want to live in do we want to live in utter poverty? Or do you want financial prosperity? I want to I want to share an illustration for you. If, if this were not true, if, if we could chuckle, but this this is a real life experience. I want to illustrate something for you: how deception, how the world can make things look good if we're so educated by the world and not educated by things of the spirit. Then it's hard to, then it's hard for the natural mind to comprehend. This is a true story that because someone told me something one time and I'm going to tell you what I saw. First of all, driving to a neighborhood, you have to dodge the bullets to get in. <laughs> Super duper run down house, all kind of things falling down. And when you come into the yard, you notice there's all kind of poison ivy, poison oak growing everywhere. And then you notice all the trash bags, bags of trash out of the yard. Then you see all kind of flies, all kind of things flying around it. You walk into the house, and the first thing that hits you is a stench. You look, and there's dirty diapers in the trash. You look upon the kitchen table, and you can see even weed crumbs. You look closer and you see it's a little bit of white powder on there. Yeah. You know, somebody's been snorting something. You look around, the whole place is so filthy, it looks like a bomb went off in there. Uh. Beer cans in the trash. Mm. Place stinks of cigarette smoke. Mm. The dogs have fleas. Mm. The children have head lice. There's no air conditioning. There's great big holes in various places where the rats come in and out. Not only is there rats, but there's mice. There's no, they have no automobile because they're living in such other poverty. And I go to witness of them and, and exhort them to become a Christian. And here's their response. That's why I said this. Their response to me is, what? Leave all of this? Oh, my God. <laughs> that is sad. So sad. I said before you, 
See, you're allowed to choose. Yes. Choose you this day. Okay, let me, let me go back to my last one. Okay. Would we rather have sickness or we want health? Yeah. We want bodies of freedom. Mm -hmm. Would you rather be selfish or generous? No. You ever been around someone who's bitter? Yes. But haven't you been around someone that's sweet? So we can choose. Would you rather be weak or would you rather be strong? Strong. Would you be carnal? Would you want to be carnal or you want to be spiritual? Spiritual. Do you want to be blind or you want to have vision for your life? Vision. Do you want to be worldly or do you want to be godly? Godly. Do you want to be drunk or you want to be sober? Sober. Do you want drugs or you want the power of God? Power of God. Do you want the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Would you rather have lust or sexual purity? Sexual purity. Amen. I was tormented by mistrust. After getting saved, I began to trust. Amen. Would you rather have fear or faith? Faith. Would you rather be in darkness or in light? In light. Oh, do you want to live among the lying? Do you want to lie or do you want the truth? Amen. The truth. Do you want to be teachable or teachable? Teachable. Do you want pride or humility? Humility. Do you want witchcraft or the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Do you want to be angry or happy? Happy. Do you want to be foolish or do you want to be wise? I want to be wise. Do you want to be insecure or secure? Secure. Do you want to be demonized or do you want to be set free? Set free. Do you want to be rejected or accepted? Accepted. Do you want your life to have no meaning, never know why you exist, or do you want God's purpose, your identity, you want vision, God's vision for your life? God's vision for your life. Do you want violence or do you want peace? Peace. Do you want suicide or do you want to obtain your inheritance? Obtain my inheritance. Do you want to be cruel or do you want to be kind? Kind. You want to be lazy, you want to be motivated. Motivated. Let me say this, vision motivates people. Yes. Yeah. People have no vision, they're not motivated. You want to be cursed. Oh, or you want to be blessed. Blessed. You want to be rebased, you want to be teachable. Teachable. Do you want to be lonely, you want to have many friends. Many friends. Do you want to be dead, or do you want to be alive? Yeah. Alive. Do you want to be lost? Or do you want to be saved? I want to be saved. I want, okay, I want to give you that contrast. Galatians chapter 6, right there at 5. Galatians chapter 6, now listen to what Paul says. Galatians 6, 14. <coughs> God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, see, think of, of the influence that Paul the Apostle had the influence, the ministry that he had, how well known he was, and what he's saying, listen, I don't want to get seduced by people's opinion, by having influence, by having a large ministry. Amen. I want everybody to know, I will not, I forbid, God forbid that I should glory, except in the cross Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this part. This is what I'm trying to say. And this, I want, I want, this is so practical. God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom, by whom the world is crucified to me. What did he say? The world's dead to me. And I'm dead to the world. Amen. What the scriptures in yes. verse 14. The world is dead to me and I'm dead to the world. When you become dead to the world, you talk about freedom. Amen. If there's an attraction, there's a longing, there's a desire for the world, you're not free yet. Amen. See, right. there's him, them that are Christ have crucified the yes. flesh. Amen. Paul said right. there's a place in God. Yes. You are crucified to the world and the world is crucified to you. Yes. You are dead to the world. And, that, yes. and if there's any secret desire to be in the world... The world will reject you Amen. because you're alive. You're light. You got to know light now. You're exposing the darkness, and, and they will reject you. Know this: if they hate me, Jesus yeah. said, they will hate you. Yeah. Yeah. They'll dead to you. The world will become dead to you yes, when you become alive enough. Okay, now I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna illustrate something, and then we're gonna come in for landing. Okay, turn to Luke chapter 15, please. Now what I'm going to do, I want to illustrate what I've tried to say so far, and I'm trying to come at this from different angles. Luke 
very powerful chapter in the Bible. One of the most powerful chapters in the Bible. Luke chapter 15. <laughs> to understand uh, chapter 15 in verse 1, it said, Then drew unto Jesus all the publicans and the sinners to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, they were complaining, said, This man will see the sinners and he will eat with him. And Jesus then answers three parables. We're going to pick up the story of verse 11. There was the parable of the lost sheep. There was the parable of the lost coin. Verse 11. Jesus said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, which is a type of God the Father, Father, give me... Selfish. Give me... I want, I want, I want everything. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of the good that follows to me. And he divided to them his living. Maybe it's inherited now. Not many days after the younger said, all together, he took his journey. Okay, so the journey is a journey, prophetically speaking, to the world. So the younger son, immature, he takes the journey. And he takes it, the journey is a, is a picture of the world. And what this is, a sinful state of distance. He begins to distance himself from father and father's house. So he goes upon the journey, and he took a journey into a far country. The far country speaks of the world. Okay, the certain man, the other father, the yes, well, give me, I want my hands right now. I want what I want right now. So he took a journey, a sinful state of distance, and he goes into the far country, a type of the world, and there he wasted. A sinful life is a wasted life. Yeah. I remember a girl from my hometown area. She went to a large church in, in Kansas City, and uh, her her husband had left and was gone for something like twenty years. And he, he takes she takes him to church, and the pastor preaches a wasted life. Oh wow! <laughs> and her husband had been gone for twenty years, got saved. Amen. Amen. I've never forgotten that. Amen. You do not want to waste your life. Yeah. He gets his inheritance. He takes it. He begins to distance himself from father and from father's house. He takes a journey into the world. He begins to waste everything that he has with riotous, excessive living. He's willing to give up father's love. Shut the flesh out. And when he had spent all, a sinful life is a life of spending. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine. Sinful life is a life of hunger and that needs. When he had spent all, and there arose a mighty famine in the land, he began to be in want. Unmet needs. A sinful life is a life of unmet needs. Yes. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. He's now in a pig pen. You ever seen someone go away from God? And that's why I gave that illustration of that, where I went to that one place, I went into detail all the. What? Leave all this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were serious. They were because they loved their sin. They loved darkness. Mm -hmm. They could not see. See, sin had blinded yeah, them. That's deception. Mm -hmm. That's the lie of the devil. See, uh, the devil tried to make the things of the world look better than the things of God. That's why in the beginning you've got to choose. You've got to make right choices. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. There he is now in a pig pen, finny swine, the swine are eating better than him. You'll see people that think they know more than God who created them and they'll walk away from God, the kingdom of God, thinking they're winning. That's why God says, love not the world, neither the things of the, that are in the world, because everything in the world shall perish. But they are convinced that they're winning. Let a little bit of time go by. God will create circumstances to draw them, to woo them, 
God's love, God's mercy, God's patience. See, when they begin to build upon things of death, death begins to set in. What, what God's saying, my ways are higher. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. But you're going to see people who do not believe that. Mm-hmm. They're going to believe the lie of the devil. They're going to believe the lie of the world. They've been seduced by the world. And they are convinced that they are winning, but in reality they're losing. Mm-hmm. You can see them building upon sink and sand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they've been lied to. They've been deceived. They have, cho- they have chosen, mm-hmm. not because they got a demon, because they have chosen to believe a lie. Yeah. They love darkness, but they love the light. Love not the world. The people that love the world, they love themselves. They love pleasure. They love darkness. And they will not come to light unless their evil deeds be exposed. Mm-hmm. So God is creating circumstances yes. Yes. to make what we call the prodigal son uncomfortable. Yes. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Um, yeah. Thank God. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So the circumstances He creates for the prodigal son. <laughs> All the money's gone. Well, let, let me let me just put this in here because I know a little bit about this background. When uh, when someone someone really dealing a lot of drugs and a lot of money, I 